Welcome back to this special CNBC TV 18 Market Town Hall. We are in conversation with Chris Wood of Jeffries. We also have Ramesh Damani and Utpal Said, market veterans, Dalal Street market veterans here on the stage now with us. Uh, thank you all once again. And of course, we've got a wonderful audience here. Once again, I'd like to thank all of you for being here uh, and being part of this. Uh, Utpal Bhai, if you can sort of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just here to facilitate the conversation. I think it was flowing beautifully. So I urge you to uh, sort of, you know, share your perspective. Thank you, Prashant. And Welcome, Chris. Thank you. The 401k parallel that you drew, mm. um, I think, was very fascinating. Mm. And that was the driver of a structural and secular bull run in mm. the US. Mm. It will be great if you could share with us how, what percentage of the pension funds eventually have exposure to US equities. And given that in India, we've barely reached about 12% or so right now. So 12% of... Of the pension funds. Assets and equities. assets are in equities. Oh, well, they could get a 50%. That wouldn't be... Uh, that wouldn't be outlandish. So we're just in the very beginnings. This is just extremely the very early days. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you just need the tax incentives to encourage people to invest in equities. But my understanding, they exist. So to me, we're right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, of course, will also uh, depend on how the economy itself does, right? And people have, as the country gets prosperous, and, we, uh, you know, that's what happened with the U.S. as well. Because, I mean, one could make the argument that, that those who can invest in equities and those who have the disposable income are already here. And now the country's got to get richer for, for, for more and more uh, of, of, the, of, of uh, the population to get into equities. I mean, would, would you... Yeah, but the... Um, but from my understanding, these pension schemes are recently conceived, right? with the tax incentives the NPS yes relatively new so so to me if it was like the test match analogy you're at you know the first morning session yes. it's really very early days so obviously in the long run you're right that's an issue but I wouldn't that's not a that that to me was right at the beginning of this whole development how much of you know just to and, take but off. you also but you also have a history you have a, a tradition of a stock market here you see in China you didn't have that tradition. You didn't have the, um, the legal infrastructure for a stock market. So India's had a, a long tradition of a capital market, so that helps it as well. Got it. Uh, you know, uh, Ramesh, the money here, as I told, as, 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 as uh, saying earlier, was one of the early backers of public sector stocks, defense stocks. Uh, and th those have been the clear leaders of the bull market. Ramesh, I just want you to share your latest uh, thoughts and perspectives in, on it. I mean, Chris earlier was saying that he would bet tactically on consumption, but the big story still remains infrastructure. And a lot of it is sort of conducted through public sector enterprises. So just, just your thoughts. Yeah, uh, Prashant, Chris, I mean, what I have noticed over various bull markets, I've been in India for 30 years, is that bull markets always have leadership. Mm. In the 90s in India, the cement stocks there, 2000, the tech stocks there. This time it is the public sector stocks leading, which was the most unloved, unknown, under-owned sector, which of course is a prerequisite for it to become market leadership. And uh, a lot of people are left out feeling because they didn't enter it. And they're saying, first it was, oh, I'm not going to buy PSU at any point, no matter how cheap it is. Now they're saying, oh, it's too expensive, that's why I don't want to buy it. Mm -hmm. But the fact is the stock's about a 20x, 30x in between mm -hmm. that time. So I believe that this leadership will continue because of better corporate governance, more government expenditure. And, uh, you know, eventually all bull markets end, and so will the bull market in public mm -hmm. sector stocks, I'm sure. But till then, I think there's a party going on. What do you think? No, I agree. Now, uh, the fence sector I first heard about three years ago, but I, in, in terms of my portfolio, I've missed the defense stocks. Which is, but the problem in India is what not to own. Right. So my portfolio has been uh, basically <laughs> built on the... Uh, in, they have, they have, where the performance of my greed and fair portfolio has come from the last, I would say, in property, uh, energy and infrastructure, but the missing part of my portfolio is defense. So let's say there's a sudden resolution of this uh, conflict. Maybe the defence stocks will correct, and that will be an opportunity to add. Please rectify that for us. Yeah. <laughs> and then another another emerging area in which I'm not uh, which I'm not invested in, but I mean it's definitely get, getting more and more attention is the contract manufacturing sector. Right. I believe you call it EMS. Yeah. Yes. So this is an example of another emerging sector. You talked about energy, Chris, though. Uh, would you bet on the old uh, fossil fuel energy, the oil, coal, uh, because you think there's still a long way to go before energy transition? Or would you say, I'm going to avoid that and 
but only on solar renewable etc et oh, no I've, I've had I've got the traditional energy sectors to me that, actually perform well yeah so no I believe that's a hedge that's been a hedge. I, I've been telling investors well they got obviously crazily cheap uh, when oil went negative so there was an opportunity there but also frankly if you want to hedge geopolitical risk in a global equity portfolio your only practical way to hedge that is energy energy and actually even in an indian portfolio if you want to hedge the risk that oil suddenly goes up because obviously this middle east situation could i've been primarily focused on russia and ukraine as a risk but the middle east is a potential risk the only practical way to hedge that is um, is energy and these energy stocks pay good return dividends that they're defensive but there's they could be like tobacco stocks mm -hmm. tobacco stocks the last 20 years have been good performers so I, I absolutely would make, brilliant performers surprisingly yes, yeah. I would make the analogy with the uh, tobacco energy stocks and also the reality is fossil fuel is going to be around for a long time yet obviously there's been an ESG constraint on some investors to own these stocks but e, I'm not sure how big. I'm not sure ESG is not really big in India, right? Mm. So Getting there. Yeah. So ESG, in my view, peaked uh, as a movement in the fourth quarter of 2021. There's uh, always been a big belief in ESG in Europe. In the US, ESG only really started to exist in recent years, but it's now become part of the political divide. So for one side of the political, one side of the political factions in America, ESG is, a, is like a villain. The other side, they believe in it, so it's become politicized. And in Asia, ESG has never really taken off, as far as I can see. It gets, it's yeah. there in every balance yeah. sheet and yeah. disclosure of what they do mm. for ESG. But Chris, I want to take up another point. You talked about inflation. Uh, do you think the G7 will get inflation back down to the 2% rate that we enjoyed? And will it continue at 2%? What are the risks to that? Now, my base case has been that inflation in the US is likely to end up a bit higher than where it's been, maybe 3 4%. Because my base case is when push comes to shove, the Fed will prioritize the economy and the labor market over inflation. The surprise to me, though, I have to admit, is how resilient the U.S. labor market has been. I would have thought we would have seen more clear weakness of the labor market by the start of this year. I think the Fed wanted to see labor market weakness because the Fed wanted to start cutting rates earlier because I would have argued two or three months ago that the Fed wouldn't want to cut rates uh, after July because their concern would be that they would then be attacked by uh, Donald Trump and be politicized. However, I've now changed my mind on that. I now think the first, but as of data up till today, I think the base case is the Fed cuts rates in uh, September after the Jackson Hole meeting. And I think the political constraint on the Fed's been removed because the reality uh, before even before someone tried to kill Donald Trump, the uh, Biden men, um, health issue basically has meant that um, <clears throat> Donald Trump's in a very strong position and all Donald Trump needs to do right now is to do something which is not naturally easy for him and that is to stay quiet <laughs> and um, be the unifying candidate because uh, so he's attacking the Fed or it would be crazy for him to do now. Right. And so basically I think the Fed can cut rates in September based on data right now and that's why you're seeing the US equity market, you know, getting more risk on again. Chris, yeah. uh, sorry. Go ahead, please. Chris, go ahead. if you could throw some light on the difference in the performance of the small caps versus the large caps in the US oh. and the other way around in India. Well, I would have to tell you, India is the only stock market I'm aware of right now where, where the small mid-cap sector is doing way better than big caps. Absolutely unique. And it's driven by this domestic phenomenon. This is not replicated in any other market right now. On the U.S. stock market, the consensus view at the start of the year was that the U.S. has achieved a soft landing and the U.S. equity market would broaden out. Uh, the exact opposite's happened. So the U.S. stock market's become narrower, which fundamentally is not, not healthy. However, it's not, it's not a speculative bubble because I can show you a chart and the magnificent seven earnings growth is just way superior to the broader market. So, yeah, this... this but in the last week has been broadening out. Yeah. The Dow and the S&P has been that, broadening that's out. That's because the market now is getting more optimistic on a rate cut. Rate cut, absolutely. But obviously if the rate cut reflects a weakening economy... That's not good. Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, but that's why it's broadening out. But I... But the, um, the, the key point is NVIDIA performance 
is so far fundamentally supported by phenomenal earnings and revenue growth on the part of NVIDIA, which is obviously the star stock. I think on a forward basis, it's still trading at whatever, 35, 40 times, right? And so so I, not... I actually started a global, greed and fair global equity portfolio uh, recently, uh, and I started at the worst possible time. I started it two days before the Microsoft purchase of GB Chat. <laughs> now, the irony is the most important development in world stock markets last year was nothing the Fed did. It was the Microsoft purchase of GB Chat because that gave the biggest sector in the world's biggest stock market, the U.S. tech sector, a new story. Mm. And I had about I had about huge percentage, like 18 percent of my global portfolio in India. Which is about eight, uh, but luckily I got positioned for the AI story during April after I, I talked to someone who explained to me in simple English why Nvidia is in this unique position. I, I have two questions. One: Will the Fed hike? Will Fed hikes? Ma will Fed cuts matter? I mean, they not hurt us when Fed was a hiking interest rates. So will will Fed, because we keep talking about well, when will Fed cut rates? Uh, will that matter in a significant way for markets? When well, for emerging market asset class in general, it matters hugely because of Fed cutting rates allows all these central banks in Asia to start cutting rates because all the Asian central banks could cut rates, including the RBI, by the way, could cut rates for their own domestic demand reasons because the inflation is lower than in, America, than in the West. But um, they've been holding off because they don't want to undermine their currency. So I think for emerging markets, it matters a lot. I think it matters less for India because India's in this amazing bull run anyway. It's, it's a fantastic discussion, and I think all of us uh, you know, we'd, we'd like to do this again, and we hope that we're able to oh, get no. this <laughs> gathering back again once we have the budget. And you were, you were telling us earlier that, uh, you know, you were going to come back after the budget. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll invite you here once yeah. again. But thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your stay here in Mumbai, Chris. And thank you for dropping by here uh, into our studios. Ramiji, Utpal, great to uh, have you with us here and kind of sort of facilitate the conversation. Uh, lot, lots of learnings, and uh, Chris, thank, thank you, you thank very you. much, all of you.